What up, Super Fun Force, good Captain G -G -G Games, and I'm excited today, guys. I got the low La 59, or I like to call La 59, La 59. <laughs> so this one is really cool because it's animatronic. And growing up as a kid, and even today, seeing animatronics on movie sets or on you know in Disney parks and stuff like that, it's such an amazing time to get this kind of product into the hand of consumers. It's definitely come a long way, and it'll be interesting to see how this technology and toy continues to evolve. So I just wanna do a quick unboxing, uh, and I have to say this is incredible. Um, you can watch a bunch of other videos um, going into more details and stuff like that, but you know I'm gonna tell you guys what you need to know, and that is if you like animatronics, then this is for you. So here it is on the front, it tells you it has three modes. You can put it on a stand with its legs, you can put it on like a you know clear invisible uh, flying floating stand, and then you can just hand hold it like it's flying in general. Okay, so let's open it up. Uh, so basically, I'll have to do this one uh, sideways, sorry guys. But it just shows you it's on a stand, no big deal, and it shows you how it can tilt and move and lift up its wings. And then here, uh, it just tells you too when you're holding it, it makes flying sounds. And then really quickly, um, yeah, nothing too... Oh, it's talking! I didn't know if it was on or not. <laughs> Here's the back. Let's do the back before we take it out really quick. It tells you again about the moving panels, the mouth moving. You just basically touch it to activate, which is interesting. 45 light sound effects, and again on the side here, uh, just tells you it's like a fun robot companion. And yeah, again, the eye is down there. Okay, so the reason why I picked this up too is that I'm kind of late to the, uh, you know, Star Wars toys. Like I've said in my other videos, I never really liked Star Wars toys growing up. Uh, they just didn't look that good, but they've looked better over the last year with the evolution of the Vintage and Black series. Uh, and then, of course, with the introduction of things like the Grogu slash uh, the Mandalorian Child, and now this. Uh, with animatronic capabilities. So let's take this out. Uh, very simple, you just slide out the tray. Comes with very uh, simple instructions right here. I guess maybe I'll hold onto these. But it just tells you about the uh, the batteries and stuff like that. So there you guys go. Hopefully it won't take me too long. I, I, I definitely have to put batteries in to use it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Here's the stand. And so like I was saying too, I went back and I watched Obi-Wan again. So to talk about Obi-Wan really quick, I think it's a great, uh, it's a great series. I, I feel like it was made to be a movie, but once Han Solo didn't do too well and you know, fans were outraged with the, um, the new Disney trilogy, I guess they decided to play it safe. And uh, you know, they obviously put it on the back burner and they ended up doing the Obi-Wan series after the success of The Mandalorian. Now. The difference is that the team behind the Obi-Wan movie were not the same people who made Mandalorian. So I think it could have been better, but I still like the characters. And then I recently saw a uh, fan edit that condensed it into a movie, which I thought was really good. But it was actually also missing some key parts, which I will talk about in another uh, video. But overall, I got to appreciate, you know, the uh, Obi-Wan character a little bit more. And of course, this droid as well. Now it is a little bit smaller than I remembered, but you know, it, I'm sure it's true to scale. So this is how it comes packed. Yeah, nice little tray container there. But man, it looks really good. It has a little bit of um, kind of like an off-white look. But overall, wow, it feels really hefty. Some nice detailing. So I thought I heard it uh, speak earlier. You guys can double check in the video. Maybe I'll check later as well. Uh, I didn't, let's see if I touch it here. Might need my hands. Uh, I don't know if it activates with gloves, but. Okay, and that's where the, the stand goes. But like I was saying, uh, it looks really, looks really, really good. I know a lot of Star Wars collectors always like their stuff weathered. So I've seen some great videos out there where you can get some black acrylic paint, mix it with water, and then just kind of brush on a wash to make it look a little bit more, you know, dirty, oily, and greasy, and then get like stuff in between the cracks. Um, one thing that I think would be really cool, I might do a little bit of that maybe. Uh, the only thing I really wish is that, yeah, there was some uh, silver here. So that would be kind of nice. Add some silver detailing to the electronics. Then you can even do a little bit of some silver effects here to look like it's chipping and stuff like that. But overall, I'm gonna keep it clean for the meantime. Uh, let's also do one thing really quick then. Um, yeah, actually it can't have talked. So I'm gonna go back in that video and see if my mind was just playing tricks on me. but. This cannot talk because there should not be any batteries in here. Uh, so what I, I am going to do is take out 
we're gonna do here together, guys. We're gonna open this up really quickly and then we're gonna put batteries in. So, bear with me for one minute. Okay, here we go, I got the screwdrivers. But yeah, so I guess I'll talk really quickly about Obi-Wan. So Obi-Wan, um, the series, like I said, is, is really good. I think what happened though is when they made it into a Disney Plus series, they kind of added the scenes, like kind of almost like filler and expanded on scenes that they didn't need. Um, and at the same time, I think the narrative suffered because when you watch it episodically, there are things that lose like emotional context, character building and drama and tension that would have been better, you know, like in the movie version where, you know, things happen back to back uh, and right away. So it's still like fresh in your memory. All right, we're just about done guys. So we're gonna put this on here. These are great rechargeable batteries by Eneloop Panasonic. I use them for like my camera stuff and you know, other, other things of course. But um, I do like the fact that it's a long series. There it is. All right, so I'm not even gonna put the base on for you guys. Let's just make it, let's just put it in action really quick. So. Nice. Now the funny part though is that it's not gonna move as well. Because actually this has to be on. Okay, oh, sorry, don't uh, don't try to move your wings on me right now. So, really quickly, yeah, in order for me to have the mouth move, it needs to be on there, but let me double check one thing. How do we put it into the flight mode? Oh, okay, so I guess what happens is it's, it's basically pretty smart. All you need to do is when it's not, when this, uh, this is not depressed, see, it's making like the flight sound noises. So, you don't have to worry about the, the flaps opening on you because when it's not pressed in, yeah, see, it's in like a flight mode. And then while it's in the flight mode, I line this up. So did this go in a certain way? I just realized that, like, does it matter? Because there's obviously three screw holes to line up. I guess that looks right. Okay, cool. So there it is. This also has like an auto sleep, so you don't really have a, uh, you don't have an on and off button on here. So I think this is a good candidate for uh, a rechargeable battery because then you can just let the batteries kind of deplete a little bit and then you can just, you know, recharge them and put them back in basically. And just to finish it off, I'll, we'll look at the other uh, mode. So again, it's on flight mode, right? So it, I guess it kind of slept right now, but if I touched it and I moved it around, uh, it would be in flight mode. And then we can go ahead and put the legs. Oh, it's, there you go. See, but if I do this, it just pops in. There you go. Wow, nice. So yeah, that's kind of, you gotta be careful. I don't wanna like break it. So my hand was on it for a second. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't wanna hurt you. La Fiti Fa, La Fiti. Lola, AKA, uh, I'll give you another word. La Fiti Nine. So there you guys go. I mean, it's pretty much the same. Whether it's here or here. Man, this thing is awesome. It's gonna be so fun to just have, you know, you just leave it on for a little bit and then when you wanna have something in the background, you don't mind it like talking to you while you're like working and stuff. It'll be definitely really cool to see. The lights are really bright and yeah, this thing is amazing. I can't really decide. I think I kinda of wanna keep it on the legs most of the time. Oh, you want to stay on the legs too, huh? And obviously, we would just go like this. Kind of like just press in there. A little bit of a snap. There you go. Oh, you're happy. Look at that. It actually reacted to being snapped into place. It was like, yay, now I can stand much more stable. All right, well, there you guys go. It is Lola 59, aka La 59. And um, yeah, again, if you like mechs and animatronics and robots and stuff like that, sci-fi, then this is a must-have for sure. I still think it looks great with a little bit of an off-white look to it. I like it being clean. Uh, I don't necessarily feel like I have to distress and like wear and tear everything right away, like oil it up and grease it up. You don't either? Oh, I agree. Obviously, in the movie, it makes it more, you know, realistic to be weathered and stuff, but I'll let this one 
uh, I guess, age naturally for a while before I decide to do any uh, effects to it. Well, there you guys go. Thanks so much for hanging out. Don't forget, keep your face, say a prayer, spread that love, be positive, be thankful. I'll be coming back at you. Peace.